Hello pupils, in this video I want to talk to you about the difference between a plastic and a steel ruler and why we use a steel ruler when doing woodwork. At the end of this video there will be a bunch of questions and I also want you to produce an information sheet with some sketches of the rulers themselves. So you will at some point have to pause and re-watch this video for the answers. So why use a steel ruler in the workshop? Well the first and most obvious difference is the material. Um, plastic can easily break, crack or shatter. In contrast, the metal is a lot more sturdy, so this is going to be more durable. Also, another key feature um, is the markings out. You'll notice that a steel ruler actually starts at zero, whereas a plastic one doesn't. There's actually this little bit at the end. And that's because if this broke away or cracked, you still want to be able to see where the markings start. So an advantage with having the measurement start at zero is that means I could actually place this right up against the edge of a bit of wood and just measure from the edge there. Likewise, let's say I was trying to measure a tight corner. Let's say I was trying to measure the length of this. With the steel wheel, we can get right in there and you can start measuring from the edge there. This wouldn't be possible with a plastic ruler because as I said, it doesn't start at zero. That's not to say there aren't advantages with plastic rulers. Um, on a piece of paper, it's a lot more easy to maneuver uh, and do some sketching with. So there's the big advantage with plastic uh, compared to, to metal. And actually you can sort of snag on the paper. It's not as easy to move around because of these sharp edges. Um, a quick note on the units. Um, you'll notice that all rulers, whether they're plastic or metal, uh, they tend to have these numbered markings, which are centimeters. Um, and then if you look closer, you'll see smaller lines between, which are the millimeter markings. Now we use millimeters because they're more accurate. For example, if I was measuring the width of this bit of wood, if I just, because it's plastic, I need to get that zero lined up on the edge, like so. Uh, you'll see that it's not seven, it's not eight, somewhere in between. So if I go to the seven and then count little lines, there's actually seven, plus one, two, three little lines. That's 7.3 centimeters or 73 millimeters. If I look at the end, I'll show you another example. Again, get that edge lined up at zero. It's just shy of two centimeters. If I count the little lines, I'll see it's one plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little lines. That's 1.8 centimeters or 18 millimeters. So for every one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. So that's what we'd read off. Um, be aware that some old rulers actually have a different measuring unit altogether. This is called a combination square. It helps you measure and mark out right angles or 45 degrees. But you'll notice there's some really big gaps here on this side of the ruler, one, two, three there. This is called the imperial measuring system and they're inches. We try and avoid that and we just use the metric system, which is centimetres. Uh, finally, in terms of marking out, there are different pencil choices out there. Like for example, this is a 4B pencil. The B actually stands for black. And when you have that, it can leave quite a dark line, but they blunt quite easily. And we don't want a blunt pencil. If you just look here where I've marked out, see how heavy that line is. It's so fat, I, when I come to saw it, let's say I was using this saw, I wouldn't know where I was doing it. Am I doing it on this side of the line, that side of the line, in the middle? It's such a fat line, it's not accurate. Another thing when marking out is you have to be careful because sometimes the um, pencil will want to follow the lines, the patterns of the wood. This is called the grain. So you notice that that's not straight and it's just because the person didn't press hard enough when they drew the line. So be aware of that. Another problem here, uh, there are actually two lines. Never have two lines when you're only cutting once. The key is measure twice, cut once. And if you've made a mistake, then that line needs to be removed before you mark another one. And in terms of your marking out, um, <clears throat> always I use a steel rule. I'm going to do an eight millimetre line from the edge. Count the little lines. Make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil. I've just drawn it towards the end there. I'm going to do this end. Again, count the little lines. I'm doing an eight millimeter gap here. 
we line up those markings and then pressing fairly hard, leaning into the ruler, a nice sharp line with, with this, in this case it's a HB pencil, which is both hard and black, that will keep this sharp edge. And now I know exactly where to cut. So you might need to pause and rewatch, um, but you're gonna answer the questions I ask you, and um, you're then gonna produce an information sheet showing the differences between a plastic and a steel ruler. Best of luck.